Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all and welcome to the channel. In this video, we will discuss uh, hash browns. Uh, sorry, I mean hash codes. Uh, I am probably hungry. <laughs> but before we begin, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wal-mursaleen Sayyiduna Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawmi al-deen. Warda Allahumma anna ma'ahum ajma'een. Allahumma amin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Fil alameen innaka hamidun majid. We begin in the name of Allah, the most merciful in this life and in the hereafter, and we thank him for all of his blessings that he has bestowed upon us, for they are innumerable. And we pray that we follow in the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. Amen. We also ask for prayers and blessings to be bestowed upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, as they were bestowed upon Prophet uh, Ibrahim, peace be upon him and his family. Now, firstly, I would like to alert you that hash codes are heavily used in data structures, particularly for hashing. However, we will not cover the data structure or structural portion of hash codes. We will simply cover the definition of hash codes and uh, uh, their general uh, uh, usage. But that is it for uh, details regarding hashing insha'Allah uh, if I am able to in the future I intend on designing uh, and creating uh, uh, the, the Java intermediate uh, level course for that will cover multiple topics including data structures but that is of course uh, I honestly do not know what fate holds for me but uh, if I have the time, uh, I will continue this uh, course, of course. Pun not intended, I guess. <laughs> but if I do not have the time, please forgive my deficiency and shortcomings. Now, what is a hash code? Simply, a hash code is a unique integer or you can call it a unique id assigned to variables each variable that occupies a place in memory is assigned a unique integer or a unique id or unique identification it is similar to antigens if you have a biological background or if you are studying in the biological field you may have come across the term antigen which is a complex molecular structure that is on the surface of the cells that is used to identify the cells of the body uh, by the uh, immune system the immune system normally uh, checks the antigens on the surface of the cells, which is why the immune system does not attack uh, normal cells that are indigenous to the body, except, of course, if there are certain issues or deformities with that antigen. And the best example to that disorder would be autoimmune diseases such as uh, lupus, erythromatosis and uh, what was the other one rheumatoid arthritis just as in, uh, as examples however this uh, we do not have an immune system in java uh, we do have a garbage collector if you would like to consider it a white blood cell but we will cover uh, garbage collection later on and god willing so this hash code is a unique value assigned to variables you may have heard uh, me say uh, in prior videos that the hash code represents the memory address this was a simplification of a hash code hash codes do not represent memory addresses 
Why? Because hash codes are integers, and integers in this uh, context are decimal numbers to the base 10. Memory addresses are hexadecimal uh, numerical values. So the hash code is not truly the address of a variable in memory, but I used it as such for simplicity. You will see why in just a moment. So this is known as a hash code. Now, how are hash codes generated? Java has a specialized function that generates uh, hash codes. Now, of course, the developer of Java is the one that instills such a function with certain features that generate the hash code. There are particular algorithms that are followed to create a hash code. Inshallah, if I have the time, I intend on creating a generalized computational scientific playlist that covers general topics such as the definition of semantic versioning, artifacts, uh, algorithms, and pseudocode, and so on and so forth. But as you can see, I have a lot to record and I do not have enough time to record them. Most likely you will find these videos in a much better quality online, of course, or articles online. But uh, uh, I do not, I care not for that. What I care about is the effort I put in because we are judged by our effort, never by the outcome. Because we control the effort, but we never control the outcome. So we cannot be judged by that which we do not control. We are only judged by that which we can control and that is from the mercy and uh, justice and fairness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, how would I translate subhanahu wa ta'ala I guess God be praised I mean if there are any Arabic speakers please uh, provide uh, an appropriate translation for the term <laughs> so here is the process by which a hash code is created. This process is known as hashing. I honestly do not know why it is called the hash. The only hash I know is a hash brown. Probably hashing has a different definition in English. I honestly do not know. And English is not my first language, thankfully, so I honestly do not care. <laughs> so we have the variable that we wish to hash and within this box or this area here we have the hashing function or the hashing algorithm and here we have uh, let us use this the hash the hash code so Every variable that is stored in memory uh, is placed through the hashing function. The hashing, the hashing function uh, creates multiple calculations and creates, uh, after the process is done, of course, it creates a unique hash code for that variable hash codes are similar to student ids in university exactly that except you are not pressed uh, as a hash brown <laughs> in a hashing algorithm or a hashing function but each student has a unique id uh, which is used for uh, easier reference or easier retrieval in searches for example the same applies for variables now, the reason I associated hash codes with memory addresses, even though uh, technically speaking, that is untrue, this is why. Uh, if I create a stack here, for example, 
and I will create a heap. I have grown accustomed to these two colors for the stack and the heap, so that is why I am using them. <laughs> stack and heap. There we go. Uh, okay, so what do I need? What do I need? What do I need? Let us say I will create two strings. So here I will have name one and this one will be at address 317 and then we close it like so and then I will create another string I will call it name two and I will close this one like so oh for goodness sake man okay and let us say that they point to the same location for now and here I will have the memory address 317 okay perhaps I should pull this upwards so that I can create the pointer you know what I will delete this because we no longer need it and we do not need this so I will pull this upwards like so so here we have 317 was that not the idea of Master Chief from Halo oh no that was 117 yep that was 117 and here I will have the name Ahmed I'll just pull it here in case I I, I may need a new name here yes so now I have two variables or two pointers or two references pointing here like so now if you recall in the strings uh, in the string subseries we discussed oh for goodness sake man we discussed how we can compare two string uh, va uh, variables and see if they have the same spelling or not and that was through a particular method known as equal so it will be name one dot equals name two and it will check to see if they have the same spelling or not well equals has two steps firstly it will check if the two objects are the same or not then it will actually check if the internal state or the attributes of both uh, variables are equal or not so it will check here then it will check here so because it has two steps it is slightly long however with the hash code this variable and this variable have will have the same <coughs> because this object will occupy position in memory so this object will have a hash code uh, i will create a randomized hash code here uh seven four three two okay i forgot the three there this is the hash code for the name ahmed now if i compare the hash code of name one we will cover them me this method in just a moment do not worry about it for now name two hash code if I compare these, this is a much quicker step than using the equals method. Why is that? Because Java will compare the hash code. So it is only one step as opposed to the equals method, which compares the objects in two steps. For this, 
it will simply compare the hash code of this one and the hash code of this one in one step. Once it realizes they are both the same, then this will of course yield true. Now, let us see what happens when I create or assign this variable to a new name here. So I will name this one Zehi. The creator, the owner, and the progenitor of the Zehi way. <laughs> and let us say the memory address here, assuming these are not contiguous, of course. Um, what would be another good number? Yeah, 70 in memory of those who died in, uh, died dishonorably. Just to remind myself that certain people do not have honor in opposition. And if you do not know what that means, when you see people hurting you, whether online or offline, but uh, they wish to hurt you aggressively, uh, and, well, I do not want to say vengefully, but hatefully, that is the proper word, you will, you will know the definition of dishonor in opposition. Especially if this person owes you multiple favors if you have done so much for that person your history will never come to your defense never it will only take one incident for that person to hate you because they have no honor thus they will have no honor in opposition <laughs> anyways now let us create so i will put even though this should be here because 317 cannot come before 70 but for the sake of this demonstration please let it slide <laughs> and I will create a hash code here as well uh, 8 9 1 2 3 like so so now this Well, you know what, so that it is not confusing, I will just add a three here, like so, and I will add a three here, so that it is not confusing, there. Now it is in proper order. And I will create the pointer, like so, to the right you go, and downwards you go. Perfect. Now, as you can see, since these objects are two distinct objects, they have been assigned two different, uh, two different hash codes. Thus, this will be false. These two do not equal each other, but also this will be false. The only difference is this processes quicker than this because as we have mentioned it only takes one step to compare these whereas for this it compares the objects at two steps instead of one that is why i would speak as if hash codes were assigned uh, were the same as the memory addresses hash codes are not memory addresses so i will uh, iterate that here like so Hash codes are not memory addresses. I simply spoke of, of them as such for simplicity. Because as you can see here, they mirror or mimic memory addresses, but in fact they are not. Another reason for that is if you have objects in different memory addresses, they will have different hash codes. But if you have objects within the same memory address, they will have the same hash code. That is also why I spoke of them as if they were memory addresses. But remember, hash codes 
are decimal numbers so to the base 10 while memory addresses are hexadecimal the reason for that is because if you retrieve the uh, the uh, memory address in binary it will be or octal it will be extremely long hexadecimal is an easier uh, format to read it could have been decimal too but as i keep mentioning we are defeated we are not victorious thus we abide by the law we do not create the law and we cannot change the law and if you think pro protests and emails can change the law just read history or take a look at the at the at worldly worldly events and you will see that protests and harsh language cannot change laws only the sword can change laws anyways so this is uh, the uh, comparison between the hash code and the equals method. Now, uh, I will be attaching a few articles that describe the uh, hashing algorithm, if you would like to read further about that. I highly doubt that most developers know about these algorithm algorithms, unless they uh, are creating programming languages because when you design a compiler and you wish to create keywords you will need to create hashes for these keywords such as while if switch and so on and so forth or if you are designing data structures of course if you are familiar with the hashing algorithms it would be best I do not feel that I am qualified to teach these hashing algorithms, so I will be leaving these articles for you to read beneath uh, in the description beneath this video, Allah and God willing. However, if I become, uh, if I familiarize myself with these hashing algorithms, I can create a lecture in the future, Allah and God willing, to try and simplify it as best as I, as I can. Now, now that we have covered this, let us see the methods that are available for hash code calculation, or rather the retrieval of the hash code. Hash code calculation and retrieval, because they do return values, that is why. And these are hash code like so and integer dot hash code with a parameter passed as an integer now this integer uh, that is passed into the hash code is the value or the variable that the hash code will uh, will be calculated for so if you pass 10 here this hash code method will calculate the hash code for the value that you pass here now before I forget uh, what did I want to was uh, something related to the diagram I drew okay I will draw it again I remember now there is a slight disadvantage what well, is not truly a disadvantage but it is a matter or an aspect you should be aware of when you are uh, handling hash codes so i will draw the diagram that i drew earlier so we have the variable here oh i forgot the, the box and here is the hashing function or the hashing algorithm hashing algorithm and yes algorithm is the name of the Islamic scientist who developed math and then you have who developed algebra to algebra is his discovery or his invention the hash code now, if you recall, I drew the arrow pointing towards one direction. 
Matt Backstreet Boys are in sync one direction. <laughs> I do not think uh, there, uh, these three are better than each other. I think they are all the same, uh, such as K-pop. This is all the same. It is always, baby, I love you, but it is never true love. It is just sex. Anyways, that is a tale for another time. All right, I did speak of that in the truth of marriage video. Yeah, I did actually. Never mind. Why is this arrow pointing irreversibly? Hash codes do not inform you of the data type of the variable. So this number does not inform you of the data type of the variable. It simply tells you that this particular variable, whatever it may be, whether it is an integer, a double, a boolean, a string, etc., has this particular hash code. The reason for that is because this conversion method or this hashing method or this hashing function is irreversible. So I will write it here for you, just to remember. Irreversible. What does that mean? It means that I cannot convert a hash code back to the variable. So if, if you receive a hash code, you would not know the data type of that hash code. Here I know that this hash code belongs to a string because it is represented diagrammatically, but Sadly, with computers, nothing is pre represented diagrammatically unless you create a graphical user interface like paint. So this is what I wanted to discuss before we tackle these. Now let us head over to, oh, I forgot to delete this from the previous lecture. And bye bye baby balloon. So I will create the string. Uh, name one, Ahmed, and string name two, Zahi, and then I will display name one dot equals, oh, well, firstly, uh, let us use the same name, and then we will change it, name two, and then I will print this name one dot hash code, which is inherited from the object class, as we have discussed before, name two dot hash code. Now let us print these. True, true, perfect. Now what if I change this to Zehi? False, false. So when you see two different hash codes, normally it means uh, or it alludes to two different memory addresses. And it functions uh, in a similar fashion to the equals method. The only difference is the hash code comparison is much quicker than the equals method. So if you wish to create efficient program flow, I would suggest using this comparison as opposed to this comparison. So we are done with this. int num is equal to integer dot hash code and we will pass 150 and then print a variable num has a hash code of plus uh, uh, num. Yes, perfect. Okay, now let us run this and see what happens. And it has provided us, oh yes, I forgot. For hash codes, the hash code of a number is the number itself. <laughs> I forgot to mention that, but the hash code of the number of a, a of an integer value is the value itself, because numbers are easier to handle considering they are primitive data types, and we will see how that is possible 
uh, if we ever reach the data structural portion of this course with Nilla and God willing. Uh, objects are the uh, more complex numbers. So let us print the hash code of name one, just to see the difference in complexity. So we will just print name one dot hash code. And as you can see, it is a more complex number due to the fact that this is stored in the heap, not in the stack, and that it is an object not or a reference data type, not a primitive data type. And that is it uh, for this uh, lecture. I hope this video was helpful and beneficial to you all. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Be safe. Take care and peace be upon you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Fil alameen innaka hamidun majid.